Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. You are about to experience some fun. Needless to say, this is Taskbot's first debut in Europe in general and our first trip to ESA. I can't tell you how happy I am to finally be able to come to Europe with Taskbot. It's, it's been awesome having an opportunity to bring him. I'm going to allow the folks to my right to introduce themselves. Sure, I'm Mahuk. I'm Zan. They are going to be helping me with commentary with the next two games. We're going to start with a game you might not have heard of before called SteamWorld Dig 2. It's a fantastic game. I consider it a Metroidvania. I have personally thoroughly enjoyed playing this game casually. Taskbot, on the other hand, has a slightly different pace. <laughs> so we're going to stop this, restart at the beginning of the run, and get this moved to the correct position and kick it off. Tech team, don't change anything. And... Let's see, I assume this button is going to start the run, so three, two, one, go. All right. So this is a technology to test the run by Kirai. Uh, short story point if you didn't play any of the, both the games. So at the end of the first Timurdi game, uh, we don't know what happened to Rusty, the main character. Um, in this game, we're playing as Dorothy, and we're trying to figure out what happened to Rusty. Um, so this is an adventure mining game, but there's not going to be um, much like you would consider mining to be slow, but this game would might make you reconsider this. <laughs> so if you have played this game before, you could see that you Dorothy is jumping slightly higher than usual, and this is because of a critic called Double Jump. It was found very early at the game reserves by Lurk. And basically, you have a six frame window where you can jump again after the jump input. And you can actually hit all those six frames by binding the jump, button, uh, the jump action on multiple buttons. Uh, we can do that, the game allows it. And so, this will be extremely useful uh, later in the run. You're going to see why. So, here we're in the tutorial section, which is kind of mandatory. But uh, it's going to be useful anyway because we're going to grab our first upgrade which are kind of speed boosts. As a Metroidvania, we're going to get some upgrades, which are going to unlock more areas and so on. And one note really quick, this run was made by Keeley, who also made the LibTAS framework. This is being done entirely in Linux on my System76 laptop, and uh, we're doing all this with both the, the author of the tool and the author of the task at the same time. It's kind of awesome. All right. So with the sprint hydraulics, not only you go faster, but you also jump higher. And we're using it right now to skip the entire tutorial section. So from now, we're not supposed to be here at all. And we're heading to one of the latest um, zones of the game, which is Yarrow. Um, so here we go. Uh, this zone is actually pretty brutal, and we have low health. So we're going to make sure not to get hit by this snail. Uh, what we're going to do is to um, unlock a transport tube. and kill ourself with self-destruction. So right now, so this has two purposes. The first one, as you can see, uh, we spawned back in the main town with all the people gathering around. So there's supposed to be a cutscene, and you're supposed to come from the left. But because we came first in this town with the from a self-destruct, uh, we skipped the cutscene. And we also activated the trans transport suit system at the same time, which is uh, going to be super useful in a few seconds. So as you can see, this game has an experience system, and it's actually super relevant for this run because uh, the higher level you have, the more bonus you get from selling ores. And we're doing our first shop here. We're getting uh, the torchlight, which is actually mandatory to get access to this first area of the game. There we go. And we also bought a pickaxe upgrade which will allow us to break all these blocks in one hit, which wasn't the case in the tutorial area, if you pay attention to this. So, first of all, we need some items. And the first one we're going to get is called uh, the pressure bomb. Um, the dungeon is right here. So, there we go. Um, while we'll be getting pressure bomb, we'll introduce the water system. So, we have a water level from now on, and um, we're going to make sure to pay extra attention to this water level, because pressure bombs are going to use a lot of water. 
So there we go, now we have pressure bombs. Um, we'll make good use of them right away, skipping the entire rest of the dungeon by coming back from where we, we came. Like, you're not supposed to do this at all. Like, this should be a tutorial section uh, explaining you how to use the pressure bomb. Again, self-destruct and so that you can use the transport tube that we unlocked when you came from Yarrow. And now we're getting another, um, um, uh, yeah, another item. As you can see, you have brick blocks, and you can't break them, uh, break them with the pickaxe, which is something more powerful. And this is why we're heading to this second dungeon. So in this second dungeon, we're gonna make extensive use of the double jump glitch and pressure bombs. Um, this uh, dungeon revolves around um, blocks and switches. We use this pressure bomb to skip uh, this phase of the block so that it, it falls down directly. Uh, as I said earlier, money is going to be a huge concern because we have a lot of upgrades uh, to buy in the shop. So we're trying to get as many ores as we can. Yeah, money, is a money management in this game is a pretty substantial part of it. Yeah. So there we go, now we have the check hammer. Uh, now we're able to break the brick blocks. So one thing you should know is that uh, you first you need water to use um, the jackhammer. And so, especially in this part, um, we're gonna manipulate a water drop from this enemy so that we barely have enough water to go through this section. We're also manipulating drops so unlike the first speedrun game, uh, the layout is not random, but the the drops, like the position of the ores, are still random. So we still need to manipulate to get as much money as we can in our way with minimal detour. So now we're heading to the oasis, which is like uh, the zombie town. Uh, they were uh, these characters were also in the first game, but there was enemies, and apparently. Uh, they are buddies, and um, they even let us get access to their arsenal, so that's cool. And um, actually, we're gonna make good use of our travel here, because there is one last item we need to get, which, like, you're gonna like it. I'm not gonna spoil it to you. Like, let's just say it begins by hook, and it finishes by shot. <laughs> and like in most games, uh, the hookshot is pretty broken. So you might be wondering why we're showing you such a slow-paced game. Uh, it's not <laughs> as slow-paced as you thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what just happened right now is that we combined the hookshot with um, the double jump trick that I explained to you earlier. And apparently, when you use the hookshot during a double jump, the jump are actually stacked, which gives you incredible <laughs> vertical momentum. And of course, you're using that. The hookshot is also very useful to dig extremely fast. So there we go, self-placed game. Um, so now we have all the items we need uh, for the rest of the game. Uh, now our main mission is to break three generators. Um, we're doing. We are on the way for the first one. So. We're in this kind of mysterious temple section, and there are actually two parts of them. Uh, in this first section, as you can see, you have puzzles around minecarts, and we speed it up with uh, this hook jump. Um, again, making good use of all the moves we know. Um, so yeah, you have two parts again. Uh, you actually, like, it's, this is monitoring. Um, also, what you just saw is called an upgrade cog. Um, you have two types of resources in this game. Uh, you have money to buy items, but you also need uh, cogs to equip upgrades. Uh, we're going to get only four of them because you are able to unequip them. So there's a lot of uh, uh, item management. So here we're constantly jumping frame perfectly to keep the momentum from the hook shot. <laughs> You're not supposed to do it this way. Yeah, totally not. <laughs> so yeah, again, a, a hook jump. Um, there's the resident sleeper path where you have to wait now. So we're having fun with hitboxes, you know. So that's time for a quick <laughs> donation, if there's any. Yeah, uh, we have a $100 donation from DMW.
No comment on that one, but we do have a $44.90 donation from Anis saying, I'm a big sucker for task content and Taskbot is always an especially amazing treat. All hail our robotic overlords. Really nice to see you in Europe, Duango. I hope you're enjoying your time in Sweden. I am. It's wonderful being in the, uh, in the European Union in general. So back to the game. We just unlocked the two doors. Uh, that blocked the way to the generator. Uh, there we go. Break them with our pickaxe. Um, as you can see, we got a lot of experience from this. Um, we're going to make good use of this experience and this bonus setting item. Uh, because uh, we're going to get some more ores on our way. So this is the first one. So you have two types of ores, if you have paid attention to it. Uh, you have normal ores that uh, take a quarter of the one of the slots at the bottom of the, of the screen. And you have special ores that sells higher, but that takes a whole spot. So we unlock uh, the, um, the transport tube at the entrance of the fire area, which is our next destination. We just have enough money, see one dollar, to buy a jackhammer upgrade which makes this part much faster. So again, we need a lot of money, and we're using these explosive bearers uh, to dig down much faster. Which, by the way, is a terrifying tactic. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, 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 I feel like this is the part where you can clearly see the difference between the 2SP speedruns and RTS speedruns. Like, this is crazy how this goes fast. And we are manipulating as well the ore's uh, locations. And, well already down there. So now something very important. We're using the hook shots and frame perfectly jump so that we can use the hook jump uh, later on. And what you've just witnessed is just basically the biggest sequence break in the game. We skipped like five minutes of gameplay in background. We're and basically at the end game yeah. except there's more stuff yeah. to do. So now we're selling everything we had on our way. And we're going to use this money to buy some HP and an additional upgrade, which is called the Vidar Boots. So you can see uh, this uh, uh, boots icon at the top left corner of the screen. Um, this means that uh, we can stay in lava for a short while without taking damage, and we take advantage to it right now. So we get some more HP in order to do some dam more damage boosting. And this is supposed to be one of the latest uh, sections of the entire game and as a result you have uh, some of the most high uh, selling ores there so this is a good place to farm money and we're gonna need a lot of it uh, so there we go dark matter and everything like that so now it's just the we're midway through this grind we need like seven hundred and fifty dollars total for jackhammer upgrade, a pressure bomb upgrade, and some water supply. Uh, again, we're manipulating uh, water drops from enemies. As you can see, we're running very low on water, but this is gonna be fine. We barely have enough water. And something good to know is that when you go back to town, you get back all your resources, water included. So we have to uh, decide very precisely when to go to the main town. So yeah, now we're using a pressure bomb this time, so that uh, you have st uh, we can cut some backtracking because before the cutscene happens, when you destroy the second generator, and now we're heading to the third area, back to Yarrow. And with all the money we uh, we farmed in the fire area, we're now able to dig much much faster, as you can see, and that's because we bought the second. Uh, jackhammer upgrade. Uh, what, it, what it does is that uh, it slightly teleports you to the next block very fast and we're gonna use it in a different way in combination with a hookshot in this dungeon getting huge horizontal boosts. If you missed it you have one more here. <laughs> and we're basically alternating be between this horizontal boost and this and the vertical boost from the uh, hook jump. So water is a huge concern in this dungeon because we need to use a lot of pressure bombs. As you can see, a pressure bomb takes an entire water bar. So again, we need to manipulate some of the drops. Time for horizontal boost. 
for fast digging. <laughs> and now we're done with the dungeon. I like that this game moves from being really pedestrian to out of controls fast. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, you would not expect that from seeing the beginning. So actually we're still uh, trying to get as much money as we can because there's one final upgrade that we need for the final boss. So as you can see we're full now, or close to full inventory. So we're gonna sell all of it. And using this um, travel to town to get back all our water for the la last part of Hierro. Actually you don't need to have uh, three water bars for doing this section, but it's actually faster to have this third water bar. You see, even with three water bars, we're still manipulating water drops, and we'll, we'll have barely enough water in the end, because we need one extra water bar uh, for one pressure bomb on the last generator. Alright. So, still getting some more money. Alright, so this is where the upgrade for the pressure bomb comes into play. So if we didn't have bought this upgrade, we couldn't have hit this second block. Uh, actually, this is very important because you're supposed to have the jackpack, which we skipped because of the sequence break in the fire area. And like uh, buying this upgrade, like this pressure bomb upgrade, uh, increases the range of the pressure bomb, which makes this skip barely possible. And now here we are in with the last generator. Again using a pressure bomb and going back to town. So buying our last upgrade for the bus, which I'm gonna talk about later. And going back to the Oasis. Uh, this NPC shouldn't be there, but not worry about it. Um, so yeah, the final boss in these is in the Oasis and actually it's Rosie. Rosie is using Rusty to power her uh, war machine, so we, sh we have to defeat her to save Rusty. So, as you can see, Rosy has a shield, and we need a mis missile to disable this shield. Unfortunately, uh, with this upgrade we bought, which is called Armored Armor, we can reflect one of the projectiles, which also disables um, the shield, which is really convenient. Unfortunately, uh, this Aramid armor had a 30 seconds cooldown. You can see the icon at the top left corner of the screen. And the other boomer is that we cannot reflect these purple spheres. So this is actually the only one of the five phases in the game that we have to wait for so long. So, And this boss yeah. fight is epically long. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely stressful. Like It lasts co uh, several minutes. And the most dangerous phase is actually the last one as we're gonna see. So while we're waiting, uh, we're gonna play with this little bird. Hey bird, follow me. Uh, this also gives me time to introduce um, you to the best way, like the faster way to hit the boss when the shield is disabled. So we're using a combination of pickaxe and pressure bombs. One pressure bomb and three pickaxe hits. There we go. It's much faster than only using the uh, pickaxe. So here we're manipulating the boss on getting intentionally hit so that um, we cancel her dashing animation. So if we get hit and get below four hearts, uh, or is it just abort her uh, dashing animation? So you might have noticed that uh, we wait for 40 seconds, and this is because uh, we, need the we need the army armor for the very last phase, and it's gonna happen right now. See? Right now. This projectile. And now we're done. The boss is defeated. <laughs> but, and there is a big but, the generator is getting crazy. Uh, the entire planet is about to collapse. So our heroes still need to escape the planet. But unfortunately, it does seem like they're not gonna make it in time. The story in this game is is interesting. It's it's a worthy story. I, I certainly had a lot of, of special feelings for this character. You're gonna pop out right here, Fen. Yeah. So our spirit buddy is gonna sacrifice himself 
to save Rusty and Dorothy. Rip. Rip fan. Sad emoji. So yeah, we still need uh, one final cutscene before the time. So it's time to give a couple of shout outs. Shout outs to Kirai for making this wonderful task of this wonderful game. Uh, shout outs to the entire um, um, Steam Addict 2 community for contributing so much um, at good sending this game. And shout outs to Image and Form Games for making this worthy game. And time is coming up. And time. time. How did we end up over estimate? I think we did something wrong with the estimate there. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that is the exact length of the task. I did uh, continue on to play the credits. Uh, I would like to say thank you so much for the commentation. Uh, com yeah, sure. Commentation. Or That's a new word. Uh, thank you for the commentators uh, to uh, to get this put together in a somewhat short order because we didn't exactly get commentary quite worked out until, oh, I don't know, yeah, three days ago? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> As is classic Taskbot.